Each and every month, hundreds of different tabletop, board, and card games appear on store shelves, launch on Kickstarter, and are dusted off of gamers' shelves to revisit our collective consciousness. And then, in a monthly video, we track 10 of the games with the biggest momentum in website traffic, online discussion, sales, and news. All factors which, once again, give these games momentum. Hey, I'm Chaz Marler, and before we begin this month's countdown, I wanted to mention that this episode is made possible, in part, by Call to Adventure from Brotherwise Games. Call to Adventure is a hero-building card game that challenges you to create an original fantasy character, draft traits and face challenges as you build your character's story and abilities in a tabletop tableau. Adventures are available in both the game's original fantasy setting and officially licensed expansions based on the Stormlight Archive and The Name of the Wind. And while the winner is the hero with the highest destiny score, every player ends up with a story to tell. Call to Adventure is available right now at friendly local game stores and through the link in this video's description. The first game on our list this month is Mansions of Madness 2nd Edition from Fantasy Flight Games, a fully cooperative, app-driven board game of horror and mystery for 1-5 to five players that takes place in the same universe as Eldritch Horror and Elder Sign. This game's app guides players through the veiled streets of Innsmouth and the haunted corridors of Arkham's cursed mansions as they search for answers to various mysteries that they will encounter. So open the door and step inside the hair-raising mansions of madness. But beware, it's going to take more than just survival to conquer the evils terrorizing this town. And speaking of survival, after no new updates for Mansions of Madness were announced during Gen Con, some players have begun to speculate whether this game will survive to receive any more expansions or content. Well, hopeful fans are marking their calendars for the annual Arkham Knights convention, which typically takes place during October or November, to see if any additional content for the game will be unveiled then. If so, well, then this content may continue to revitalize the lifeblood of this four-year-old app-guided game. The next game on this month's countdown, Macau, joins the list of titles that Queen Games will be revisiting in their upcoming Famous Cities line of games. Macau, first published in 2009, is being re-implemented as Amsterdam, which, in addition to the new setting, also introduces some additional card balance improvements and several other new gameplay elements. Macau challenges players to build combinations of abilities as well as to correctly calculate the advantages of delayed gratification for the actions that they take. And that's a valuable skill to develop, which I learned way back in high school working my first summer job on a farm un un until it mysteriously burned to the ground. Many tasks and challenges await the players on their journey through Macau, whether they're a captain, a governor, craftsman, or a scholar. In the end, prestige will be earned by those who choose the wisest course of action, have the best overall strategy, and don't accidentally set fire to their place of employment by using a lighter to check for a propane leak. The Amsterdam re-implementation is currently scheduled for release in 2021. Another game that bounded its way up the charts this month is the Mage Knight board game, first published in 2011. The Mage Knight board game puts players in control of one of four powerful Mage Knights as they explore, and conquer, a corner of the Mage Knight universe under the control of the Atlantean Empire. They'll build an army, construct a deck with powerful spells and actions, explore caves and dungeons, and eventually conquer powerful cities controlled by this once great faction. Mage Knight has a reputation of sorts for being long beloved, but also densely packed with lots of things to do and remember, remember how to do. For those who have wanted to take the plunge into this strategic fantasy exploration game, its publisher recently confirmed that a reprint of its Ultimate Edition is imminent quite possibly making its way through distribution channels to stores right now as I am recording this. So this might be a really great opportunity to check out this game if you haven't already. You know, you'll find that wisdom is all around us if, if you just take the time to look for it. For example, one day at my high school summer job, be for what would become known as the Great Propane Firestorm, my boss, Dave, bounded across the farm to remind me that if I ever wanted to join the ancient pharaohs in creating and growing one of the most impressive sites the world has ever seen, honoring the Egyptian gods Horus, Ra, Hathor, Bastet, Thoth, and Osiris, 
then it would be imperative that I carefully manage the delicate balance of actions that are available to me while preparing for the reckoning by the goddess Maat. I'm pretty sure that Dave had a heat stroke. But now, I can finally put Dave's slurred words of wisdom to use by playing Tekenyo, Obelisk of the Sun. Because this game is divided into six sections, each associated with an Egyptian god. And in the center of the board stands an obelisk which casts its shadow onto different parts of the board. As the game progresses, the sun's rotation alters which sections are sunny, shaded, or dark. Tekenyu, Obelisk of the Sun, was originally scheduled for retail release on August 20th, but it got pushed back to September 3rd. Which means, as, as long as it wasn't pushed back again at the last minute, it should be available by the time this episode airs. Next up is Descent Journeys in the Dark, 2nd edition, which got a bump of momentum this month when its publisher, Fantasy Flight Games, made a blink and you'll miss it teaser reveal of a 3rd edition of the game during its online streaming Gen Con announcements. In Descent, one player takes on the role of the treacherous overlord, and up to four other players take on the roles of courageous heroes. During each game, the heroes embark on quests and venture into dangerous caves, ancient ruins, dark dungeons, and cursed forests to battle monsters, earn riches, and attempt to stop the overlord from carrying out his vile, vile plot. Featuring double-sided modular board pieces, countless heroes and skill combinations, and an immersive story-driven campaign, Descent Journeys in the Dark, 2nd edition, transports heroes to a vibrant fantasy realm where they must stand together against ancient evil. And you know what else would be evil? If I let another moment go by without mentioning some of the other countdowns that we produce each month with the help of the incredibly talented Paula Deming and Matthew Jude. Paula brings us the 10 games that found their way onto our collective radar, and Matthew lists 10 games that we can't let go overlooked that month. So hopefully, all these videos can be a fun and informative way to discover both old, new, and other games that you might not have known about. But now, let's continue on to five more games on this month's countdown. Next up is Smartphone Inc., which plops you into the surprisingly comfortable, yet still a little pinchy around the toes, shoes of a powerful telecommunications CEO as you manage one of the world's largest smartphone producing companies. Research technologies, develop your factory, decide whether or not to give Gary from Fabrication that promotion that he's been angling for, and build your worldwide office network while you outprice your competitors. Smartphone Inc. recently released an expansion called the version 1.1 update, which adds four new modules to the game, plus a new game board specifically designed for two to three players, five new CEO miniatures, and a hardcore mode, just in case mastering the day-to-day -day operations of a major international technology conglomerate wasn't, in and of itself, enough of a challenge for you. If you really want a challenge, try managing the day-to-day -day operations of a dusty farm where your employee is some stupid high school kid who's too dumb to get out of the sun before heat stroke causes him to start hallucinating that you're spouting nonsense about ancient Egypt when you're actually warning him to get out of the way of the irrigation tractor that's about to run him over. <laughs> now that... That is a challenge. You know, you'll find that wisdom is all around us if you just take the time to look for it. For example, one summer day, while recovering from being mauled by farm machinery, my boss, Dave, bounded into my hospital room, pushing my IV to the floor to remind me that the leaders of the seven great cities of the ancient world had to continually work to retain their greatness by gathering resources, developing commercial routes, and affirming their military supremacy, thereby building their city and developing an architectural wonder which would stand the test of time. And that wisdom prepared me for the game Seven Wonders, in which players do all the things that I just described. Seven Wonders is, arguably, one of the board game hobby's modern classics. And, and the game's publisher, Repost Production, recently announced a second edition of the game, which is currently scheduled to be released on September 11th. This version features refreshed art, mechanisms, and gameplay, and while it's not a vastly different re-implementation of the game, it may be one that's still worth taking a closer look at if Seven Wonders is one of your go-to games. The next game on this month's list is Parks from Keymaster Games. In Parks, players take on the role of two hikers as they trek through different trails across four seasons of the year. 
while on the trail, these hikers will take actions and collect memories of the places that they visit. These memories, then, are represented by various resource tokens like mountains and forests. Collecting these memories in sets will allow the players to trade them in to visit a national park at the end of each hike. Now, a unique edition of Parks was available from Barnes & Noble titled the Barnes & Noble Exclusive Box Art Edition. The primary difference in this version is that the box sports different art and a slightly different size. And for all other intents and purposes, all the components inside the box are identical to the original game. So, if you spy this alternate box art on the shelves of your local Barnes & Noble, don't worry, you're not hallucinating. Any hallucinations are more likely due to a combination of propane asphyxiation, heat stroke, tractor mauling, and an incorrectly calibrated morphine drip while you were in the intensive care unit. The penultimate game on this month's list is the new game from the op, Harry Potter House Cup Competition. The House Cup calls for the brightest students to compete in this worker placement strategy game, so no victims of farming mishaps here. In Harry Potter House Cup Competition, use knowledge and magic to learn lessons and complete challenges. The player who earns the most points for their house will be named the House Cup Champion, and the player who earns the least points for their house has to spend the afternoon writing scripts for board game countdown shows. And the game gaining the most momentum this month is Aeon's End from Action Phase Games. In this game, the survivors of an invasion long ago have taken refuge in the forgotten underground city of Gravehold. And there, the desperate remnants of society have learned that the energy of the very breaches of the beings that used to attack them can be repurposed through various gems, transforming the malign energies into beneficial spells and weapons to aid their last line of defense the Breach Mages. Aeon's End is a cooperative game that explores the deck-building genre with a number of innovative mechanisms, including a variable turn order system that simulates the chaos of an attack, and deck management rules that require careful planning with every discarded card. Players will struggle to defend Gravehold from the Nameless and their hordes, the Zip Codeless, using unique abilities, powerful spells, and, most importantly of all, their collective wits. So. Yeah, good luck to me. And there you go, there are the games propelling in positive position this month. And for more board game countdowns, playthroughs, and pontification, check out the other videos posted on the channel. Until next time, I've been Chaz Marler from Pair of Dice Paradise and Watch It Played. Take care, and stay out of the sun.